everybody. This is Mira. All snow is win five, get one free for another episode of New Amsterdam. Now, where we last left off, we just had the uh, big bad. Uh, uh, well, no, actually, we didn't just have the moot. We had another thing go on where there was a certain offer made by a certain uh, person who was in a certain amount of power that it was certainly upsetting. Um, on top of that, we also had some hijinks and shenanigans that uh, happened with uh, some of the folks who were sitting at the bar a little bit beforehand. And of course, we had, as always, a little bit of fun in the med bay. Now, today, my fellow players, is Friday. In game, of course. It's actually real life Thursday. And if it is Friday for you, thank you for tuning in all the way over in wherever the fuck you are. Um, it's late for you. Go to bed, but not after watching this stream, though. Um, but in game, it is Friday. Scott, you know what that means? Is it Friday morning or I thought it was in the evening? Oh, it's Friday morning right now. Mm -hmm. okay. And it's going to be... Uh, it's uh, Friday at 1 was when you're supposed to be there. It's about 10 in the morning, 11 in the morning, something like that. You got a couple hours beforehand. What is Trinix doing right now to prep for this? Um, I'm getting a blank notebook, so I have empty pages in case I want to take notes for something or something. Mm -hmm. um, cleaning myself up looking as nice as I can. Excellent. And, yeah. All right, excellent. Yeah, and you're kind of uh, getting ready in the med bay, and I think at this point, um, Suzerain probably, uh, Suzerain probably um, looks at you, uh, and she, like, walks in and is like, hey, um, so uh, you've got, you've got that, um, you got that thing going on right um today yeah yeah in like a couple hours kind of like oh good cool cool um cool and uh you can't can't bring anyone can you well um he said not bring anything to company went to like, go who's to say you can't go to a seminar and learn oh. as well oh oh no 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 i um you can't take pain with you uh or um uh ryan or uh anyone who could um fire a, a gun or uh punch someone uh, really hard I, it's a seminar thing. If they want to look like they're learning and if shit goes awry, they're available. I... Uh, um, and you would remember you're, you're not allowed to bring any guests, you know. Um, they were specifically like, just you, you know. And... Hey, though. Am I still in the med bay? Yeah, you're in the med bay. Maybe you're, like, kind of plugged in right now. And you see Trinix getting, like, looking presentable. And what, one question, what does Trinix's, like, nice clothes look like? Like, what's he wearing to this? Well, it's, I'm trying to find a nice button-up shirt and some really nice slacks. Okay. Don't really have nice shoes, but at least make sure there's no stains on his lab coat thing. Make mm -hmm. sure that's clean. Yeah. I want to wear that because that's comfy to me. And it's got pockets. You you notice as Suzerain's kind of talking to you, she's kind of inching closer, and finally she's like, "Listen, your uh, your collar's all fucked up, and you need to." And like she just starts like immediately working you over with the whole like momming you fixing your outfit thing, you know. Um, and she's like, "Listen, you're gonna be going into." a fucking technological wonderland. And I mean, I don't know if you watched that, that whole Willy Wonka thing or anything like that. But, um, if you did, you might remember what happened to all the kids in there. Uh, I mean, I, and, and you're going somewhere. I mean, you don't have any family. 
Like, no no official on paper family. So, I mean, if they decide to make you disappear or... And she's, you so, know... <clears throat> I'm, I want to stop her and just... Be like, Scissor, and we're going to make him wear the glasses. Also, after this moment before mm-hmm. where they cut my shit off, would I have been able to take some time and kind of, like... backwards what's the what's the word i'm trying to look like for when, you, when you're trying to Playback. reverse engineer oh, reverse, reverse engineer. engineer how they did that to try to compensate for the future um yes but unfortunately there's nothing you can do to compensate for the future because i mean yeah i guess essentially what they did was they just imagine that that dome that was like above them that was stopping the rain just essentially turned into like a lead lined box. Essentially what they did is they made it so it was physically impossible for signal to get in and out. Got it. Yeah. Got it. Shit. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, I guess well, I could try and amplify th- it a bit, but I don't know. Mm-hmm. Well, as far as they know, I could be the doctor that wears glasses because this is only the second time they see me, and I wear the glasses all the time. Sure. Yeah. 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 I mean, at least we'll have eyes on while they allow us to have eyes on. Yeah. Um, But that's real dangerous anyway, because they could just shut it off at any time, and then you're kind of stuck there by yourself. Yeah, and Suzerain probably at this point is like, listen, I know that you're doing this, and you're not doing it, because Lucky is telling you to. In fact, I'm pretty sure she almost halfway doesn't want you to go. I, I don't know. I get this weird feeling from her. But, um, but um, listen. Just, just be careful. You're, no offense. And she kind of like, she goes, Cash, can, can you plug your ears real quick? Trinix, yeah. you are, yeah. Trinix, you are literally the only person here who understands what it's like to be here in the way that we are here. And you're like, you're my rock. You cannot die out there. Okay? Uh, Okay. I mean, I'm just going to learn. She's like... Maybe help? She's... Yeah. And she probably, like, grabs your shoulder, you know? Um, in kind of that, like, that way where it's like, hey, listen, you know what I mean? She's like, okay, but like... Can I, can I open my ears now? Can I open, can I do that? She, she holds up her finger and goes, one minute, hun, and then looks back at Trinix and is like, if anything happens, I don't care what is going on, run. Don't try and figure out what's going on. Don't try and... Don't try and steal anything. Don't try and learn anything else. Just fucking run. Okay? Promise me? Yeah. Okay. For you, yes. And yeah. I'm I'm pretty sure my fingertips are going to get grafted inside of my ears if I don't take them out in a second. Yeah. And she looks at you and kind of gives you a thumbs up. Okay. 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 We're cool. It's fine. Uh, and she like grabs the glasses off of the table and hands them to you and goes, uh, remember, uh, if, if you're wearing glasses to look like a real person who's wearing glasses, uh, and she hands you like a microfiber cloth and then puts a tiny smudge at the corner of the glasses, like bottom right of the eye, you know, and is like, just just pretend that you don't see that until somebody points it out because it's kind of real obvious and then go, oh, shucks, and then clean it off, okay? <laughs> oh, also, so I want to... look past all the dirt and grime. On the... Yep. It's what... Oh, my lanta. She's like... That's how sh- fucking people wear glasses, man. Yeah, and she, she, points, uh, she points towards her eye and goes, contacts, used to do it all the time in a war zone. <laughs> uh... Also, I want to slip a recorder into his pocket. It okay. does not transmit anywhere. It purely records. Nothing mm-hmm. else. Gotcha. And, and it's very small. And I'm going to yeah. just tell him, like, where would we put this? 
No, it wouldn't go in his pocket. Ooh, that's a rough one. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll have set the glasses up to already have. Hey, Daniel, hot mic. Uh, maybe I will have set <laughs> the glasses up. Someone sent me something. I apologize. Um, I want to set that up to also record. So even if it cuts mm -hmm. off the signal, yeah, he's still getting like a local recording. Are you doing that but, with the yeah, glasses? That's, yeah, I think okay. so. I think that would be better. It, it less noticeable. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, at this point, probably uh, Suzerain's like, okay, we got you prepped, we got you good. Just you got this. You got this. I trust you. You got this. I trust you. You got this. Get out there. You know what I mean? Like points towards the door. Okay. Wait. Oh, my notepad. Yeah. Need that. Mm hmm. I mean, if you can't bring a guest, can he bring a pet? No. <laughs> um, yeah. This is my pet tiger. <laughs> and uh, she, she waits for you to uh, get out the door. And then as soon as the door closes, she leans over to Cash and is like, he does not got this. I am so freaking out. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I know. Listen, I think it would be really great to probably have, like, Scene and Scene's cat, like, follow him at a safe distance. And, uh, you know, like, be around. I know Scene won't be able to go into the dome. Mm. But, uh, like, back up of some kind. Maybe take pain with him. Uh, yeah. yeah I, I mean, you know, and uh, Suzerain and actually... Can... Scene. Oh, uh, scene, you Gosh. get a little... Um, you get a notification <laughs> that just <laughs> says Suzerain, and it... Yeah, doot, 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 doot. Um, and uh, you get a... Um, uh, what's the one for Kim Possible? Because that's the one for Power Rangers. I don't know. <laughs> Do, 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 wait. I only do, know do, the thing. Yeah. No, it, it, it is. Yeah, it is. It is. Oh yeah. Do, 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 do. It's close, but it's not the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but no, you get you get a uh, you get a message that's from Suzerain that's like uh, Med Bay now uh, bring pain. <laughs> Demanding. Mm-hmm. I'll, uh, I'm not lucky. I don't, I don't get sassy with that. Yeah. I just, I just respond like, uh, on my way. Yeah. Cause you know, it could be an emergency. So I, I stop right. and check. I tell I'll... Payne, I was like, Hey, uh, Susan need needs us in the med bay. Pack your gun. I think something might be going down. Oh yeah. Um... I'll just pack my gun. Wait, I have four of them and they're always on me. So I think I'm ready. Let's go. <laughs> <That's> beautiful. <laughs> I love that. As, as, Hi. as we wait for Suzerain, or not Suzerain, as we wait for Scene and Pain, I'm going to look over at Suzerain and go, um, I, my ears don't work the way regular people ears do anymore, but I won't tell anybody what happened. She looks and goes, oh, you, um, uh... I, I can't turn them off. They don't turn off. Okay. Uh, you mean a lot to me. Um, I'm very sorry. And probably right as she says that, the door opens with scene and pain. Oh, no, it's fine. I don't want to turn them off. I'm just saying that, like, I don't know. I figured you'd want to know. I'm kind of on this honesty kick lately because, you know, you don't know. That's okay. Things happened. And I have to yeah. be on an honesty kick. So now I'm kind of honest with everybody that I feel are valuable in my life. And... Scene. Oh, go ahead. No, it's fine. And I, like, I love that scene will walk in because I'm like, yeah. at this point, I'm just like, I, I care about you as a person and don't know how to express that properly. And hopefully scene comes in and cuts me off. I'm yeah, honest, scene, but... you and Pain <laughs> walk in in what is very obviously a slightly awkward social exchange between a 15 year old girl and like, what, a 30 year old woman? 25? I'm 26? like, I'm like 25. 25 yeah. year old woman. Yeah. 
Yeah. No, God, I hope it just doesn't, I hope it doesn't feel like that. No, like, I'm, no, no. Like, it's, it's awkward as in like, it's like, there's obviously a weird communication barrier, not as in like, there's something inappropriate going on. Um, but yeah, cool. you, uh, you guys walk in on that, you know, and Suzerain's like, Hey, good. You're here. Um, thank Trini- God. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Trinix is um, going to uh, Artis. Uh, I need you guys to um, follow him. Uh, sorry. Um, I think it would be a good idea um, if if you guys uh, kind of kind of stayed a, cu- a couple piece a couple paces away from him. Y- you know. Will you just do a couple of drive bys every once in a while? Because I wouldn't use that terminology. Interested. It's it's fine, not like you know the shooty shooty bang bang drive by, <laughs> but like a like a casual stalker drive by. Can we do that? Ah yes, you edge runners. You guys make natural stalker. I, uh, sorry. Um. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. No, okay? we're all stalkers. It's cool. Yeah. You're, we you're understand. Talking. We're not morons, right? <laughs> he looks yeah. at scene. Scene is uh, muted. Yeah, Daniel. If you're yes, to I am. You Sometimes I wonder. <laughs> yeah, and Suzerain's like, sorry, I'm having a really weird day today. <laughs> um, and she like sits on one of the operating tables, probably the one closest to Hank, and uh, goes, yeah, he was doing his whole tip-tap-tappy thing earlier. Um still weirds me out. It's not oh, worse. Yeah? Mm, no, 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 no worse. Uh, he'll, he'll get uh, some no, no, alpha. Uh, oh. I asked if it was Morse code. Oh, no, not, not Morse code. Um, still, still gets alpha waves every once in a while. Um, but, but bursts, nothing, nothing enough to wake him up. Hmm. That is really concerning. Um, so it I'm I am now in light nice. wounds instead of serious. So <laughs> you, you can be a person again. If yeah, what if we mm-hmm. did another P to P to see how Hank is doing? I'm shaking my head no because. <clears throat> I just, uh, I'll let the other players, uh, say their feelings, but, um, Suzerain would say hell no. Okay, well, Cash will say that shit out loud. (laughs) Yeah. That's gonna be a no. (laughs) I mean, okay, I didn't exactly. Yeah, well, I'm very good at this. And also, I didn't ask permission last time, and, you know, I'm Yeah, because we didn't think you would be stupid enough to do it. It's not and about we know it's curiosity. It's just curiosity. I can't help myself. That's how I, I got into this fucking business. Net runners go, what's in the box? Why shouldn't I open the box? Well, this box could kill you. I'm already Damn. worrying about one guy dying. Why not? Why not my other friend? Or probably why not my only other friend? Okay, I won't do it. Thank you. And then she looks at scene in pain and goes, oh, oh my God, I'm sorry. Uh, nope. Fuck, I am. I'm Don't gonna worry go get about a... it. I'm used to not being a friend when people think of me as uh, the wall between their their friend and death. Oh, right. pain. You're always my friend and I love you. It's fine. I'm going to go get a, a snack from the kitchen uh, so I don't fuck things up worse. I'll be back in a little bit. <laughs> hey, before she leaves, what time is it? Uh, About this time, it's getting to like 1230. Oh, you know what? Girl, I bet Trixie's making something. Mm-mm. Yeah, uh, she probably would go, okay, I'll go check with her, you know. Hey, will you bring me something back? And also ask her if it's gumbo. And if it's gumbo, will you bring me some? And if it's not, maybe don't mention the gumbo. But else if you do mention the gumbo, maybe you should make it tomorrow. Men- mention the gumbo. Yes. I love how you but guys no. just treat this industrial kitchen like it's your own personal kitchen. That's a cool perk. Supposed to do. I mean, 
it's not yeah. like we have a kitchen in our room. <laughs> so. I mean, that's true. Uh, yeah. And she uh, kind of like looks at you guys and goes, oh, oh okay. Uh, I'll go check on the, the Schrodinger's gumbo. Uh, and then, you know, walks out of the room. And it's just you guys. So that was not the emergency I thought it would be. Okay, Suzerain is worried about Trinix. I am also, like, mildly worried about Trinix. He manages to sort of happy-go-lucky fumble his way into epic situations. <laughs> I'm just, I'm concerned that he might not make it out of this one. <laughs> That is a very valid concern. Yeah. As I've witnessed myself. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, he's pretty wonderful for all his fucked up upness, but aren't we all a little fucked up? He might be the best of us. That's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I think right as we say that, we're going to slam cut right over to Trinix. Trinix? You are standing, waiting for the car that they said would arrive. And it arrives precisely on time, 15 minutes before the lecture. Um, car drives up. You see a blue scanner pop out of the side of the car. And this is a Faperble. Now, to remind the audience what a Faperble is, a Faperble is a Ferrari, Porsche, uh, Rolls Royce, uh, um, Ben's Lamborghini. I forgot about the Faperble. Yeah. Uh, Ferrari, Porsche, Rolls Royce, Bentley Lamborghini. Oh. There we go. Sorry. Um, the the mega car, mega luxury car company. Um, this is a sleek looking car, right? It's it's the kind of car that a fucking movie star would get in, right? And the scanner pops out of the side. It goes over your face a little bit. The light kind of catches in your eye or whatever. Um, and then. Um, uh, it goes, um, passenger detected, Trinix, Lorna, Psh! and a gold door opens to show an empty car. It says, please enter the vehicle. Ah, get in and be like, this is cool. <laughs> yeah, you get in and uh, the car door closes and you are in. The most perfect little um, climate-controlled environment that you have seen, right? Um, it uh, has a dispenser in front of you that says, um, "Would you like a, uh, or would the passenger prefer to have a beverage?" Sure. And uh, it says, um, "Please describe what beverage you would prefer." Uh, uh Why, water yeah, beer. Yeah. Um it says water producing clean H two O. Fills up, drops a glass down a chute and starts filling up a glass that is perfectly clear. It says, um iodized chlorinated uh or iodized and chlorine and chlorine treated water currently being disposed. Remember Please drink eight glasses of water per day or 64 fluid ounces of water per day. And uh, the cup uh, slides towards you. Well, I'll look at it kind of funkily and be like, hey, look at the clearest water I've seen. Huh? Oh, yeah. And it tastes like nothing. Literally nothing. The closest analog you're going to get to, like, real life is, like, Fiji water, or if you've ever had reverse osmosis water, it's, it's like that. It doesn't taste like pipe. It doesn't taste like dirt or grime or anything like that. It doesn't taste like iodine. It doesn't taste like other water purifiers. It just tastes like clean, crisp water. Um, does it, he, he's kind of like, where's the taste? Yeah. Oh, well. And um, it says, current weather conditions. The temperature outside is 12 degrees centigrade. The current weather conditions are overcast with light rain. Currently, the weather forecast is 
heavier showers starting at 2 in the afternoon. Would you like to hear your daily news brief, Mr. Lorna? Sure. I've never heard a news brief. This could be fun. And uh, you get um, a screen drops down and you're dun, 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 dun. Welcome to NANN, once again providing you your news for the daily corporate lifestyle. Currently, stocks for uh, currently stocks for Azure International are dropping heavily after an engagement in South Africa is being sorted out. Looks like that defense contract is going to fall through the fall through the cracks. And then another uh, another guy is like, <laughs> "Damn right, Bob. Damn right." Now, looking though at some stocks that are skyrocketing or skyrocketing. Uh, Panopticon Incorporated, along with their workforce, is once again defying expectations by introducing a new program or by introducing a new program into their current lineup. Currently, behavioral modification chips are on the rise, and it appears that their R and D boys have uh, and their R and D boys are looking at very high projections. Um, and then it like cuts to some dude who's like very obviously a corporate mouthpiece, and he says. Um, Panopticon has always been first and foremost about rehabilitation, and we believe through these new behavioral chips, rehabilitation and work can go hand in hand in a more smooth combination than ever before. <laughs> well, those Panopticon boys sure do seem like they've got something figured out, and of course that means that their stock prices have jumped by four whole points. That's right, people holding Panopticon shares are going to be getting at least 400 more euro dollars on the dollar from what they were originally looking at. What a hell of a jump. Absolutely. Um, and it's like, this was your NANN news. Dun, 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 dun. And like, we the thing rises back up. Probably about that time, it says, you have reached your destination. Please stand or please stay clear of all doors for procedural team to uh, for procedural security team to do sweep. Psh! And both of the bay doors open and you have the same guys from before. You know, they're holding guns, but not pointing them at you. And at this point, hey, nice seeing y'all again. Yeah. At this point, you see a face that you haven't seen before. This guy's got a uh, pretty, um, pretty severe face. He has a, Sharp chin, he's built like a fucking brick shithouse, um, stuffed into this suit that uh, is not trying to hide that it is Kevlar weaved, right? It's got the hex pattern that's showing that it's got woven shit in it. It's got the trademark logo on the side. This is more of a show of, no, no, I'm dressed to kill, literally. You know what I mean? Uh, he's got this big fucking gun on his hip. Uh, he's got sunglasses on, square as fuck head, got uh, that super tight crop on his hair. You know, his hair is, it, you if you had to wager, exactly an inch, right? Exactly an inch tall, right? Uh, he kind of says, uh, Trinix Lorna? That, that'd be me, yeah. Kind of goes, uh, hi, I'm head of security here. My name is Rainier. Please, step out of the vehicle. Oh, they're done with the suite? Okay. And uh, he kind of, you uh, get out of the vehicle and he says, oh no, sweep hasn't even begun. He takes a small device and, you know, he, he kind of takes it all over your body. You know, it's, it's like a metal detector, right? All over your body, your arms, your back. And then he looks at the glasses and very deliberately holds it over your eyes and you hear beep, 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 Son, what's your lens? What, the, so I could see? No, as in, what are you? 10-10? 10-15? Are you nearsighted, farsighted? Farsighted. Kind of goes, all right. And, uh, someone, as if they were just expecting that answer, hands him a pair of glasses. He says, gonna need you to remove those glasses. No recording devices on premise. Oh, I was going to save them for notes for later in case I missed something when I was listening. Says, right. uh, yeah, and he says, um, the professor will, uh, he'll tell you what you can and can't keep recorded. He might even be able to send you with a brief. And, um, you guys watching the transmission on these glasses just immediately see this go down. 
Um, and he trades out the glasses, gives oh, you some glasses that are uh, hard to see out of because I'm pretty sure your character has good vision. Yeah. He's kind of, yeah. He's kind of like, holy crapoobles. So I'm yeah. going to do that weird nerd thing of doing it down uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and look over the top. Excellent. The bifocals move. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Um, and he kind of goes, excellent. If you'll follow me. And um, he uh, you know, starts leading you. Obviously, anything on your person that could be used to record, including a phone like an agent, um, has been confiscated. Right. Um, pretty much. And any weapon, obviously, including the needle gun, you know, um, yeah. the, those are, the paper and pen. No, absolutely not. They're they're not concerned about that. They just are concerned about, um, you know, they didn't want a direct recording device uh, and they uh, didn't want any weapons, you know. Um, but yeah, so uh, they they escort you. And of course, as there are light showers going on, um you see uh, inside here, of course, is, as it was, sunny and not raining. Um, and a pretty nice uh, 20, what would that be, 28 degrees centigrade, which would be like like 60, I think. It's, it's about 60 Fahrenheit. I don't, I don't fucking know what actual temperatures in Celsius are. I just know 12 is cold as balls. Um... But, uh, yeah. I like interrupt the... Uh, I like to tell the dude, it's like, you know, if you would update your car when it does the weather, it does the weather for out there. You should have it do both. Because that kind would of. just be like... That'd be cool adaptation. Your adage. Oh, yeah. And he's completely silent. Um, and kind of... Uh, or he, he probably looks... Half looks at you. Like, you know, the sort of thing where he motions his head towards you. To, to acknowledge that the grunt that he makes, which is just a, mm. is um, acknowledging you, you know? Um, and like this dude, I mean, I'm telling you, he looks slick. He's got wingtip shoes. He's got the earpiece. He's got the sunglasses, everything. If, if I were to compare this guy to a character, it would probably be um, Detective Tinch from, uh, from fucking, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, uh, that one show on Netflix about uh, the first people hunting serial killers, Mind something. Um, mind flares. I don't know. No, not mind flares. But mind fuck. <laughs> not mind. I think fuck. it's just mind hunters. Mind, mind hunters. hunters. That's the one. Yeah, detective tension for mind. You're like the people that hunt <laughs> serial killers. Mind something. Yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah. Um, so Gunner has just arrived. Give me just one second while Gunner uh, serenades you with his lovely singing voice. Look at look at these look at these things I printed today, I, on my printer. I, I printed this and I printed this and I printed him. He's so sexy. I can't stand it. I just have to, you know. I was They're cool. scratching my cat with uh, for the cat tax, and uh, gosh, she shed everywhere. This is my one of my favorites. It's the Zelda Life Fairy, and it says "Get a Life." How is that? Sorry, mm -hmm. uh, I randomly got gifted a subscription to someone I've never watched before, so I'm really confused how. It, it, it happens when people start giving out um, random Twitch uh, subscriptions. Sometimes people who watch someone who f uh, switched over to them when their show was over will get a. Uh, oh yeah, probably. <laughs> We'll get a subscription. It's just weird. You guys need some decals? Hello. Hello. Did Gunner Ole. Did you? Hmm? Did Gunner hasn't spoken. Gunner, sing us a bar or two of Whale of the Tail. At least turn on your camera. Look at your beautiful face. Okay. Well, if Gunner's decided to not choose entertainment, <clears throat> this fine. fine. Um, so back to where we were. 
Um, so, uh, Trinix, you are kind of walking behind this guy, and um, you walk up to this big fucking building, right? Um, it's it's like it's huge. It's uh, I mean probably four wings on this thing, which is a real fucked up bird or a very big building. Uh, so. I hope you have a scooter or like a little pedal bike or something, because that's a long ways to go. Kinda, what? he kind of turns back and he goes, "Good for your legs." Yeah, they could use some more. Yeah. Tone. Yeah, kind of opens the door and leads you in, right? And as he leads you in, you get to a uh, you get to um, this big hall, right? That is just um, like filled with all sorts of science types. And two things become immediately apparent: one, you are underdressed for this occasion; two. You are the youngest person in this room, right? Um, I would so, like to hold for a moment and thank you all for coming to my rendition of 444. Thank you. You motherfucker! I swear to God, I'm going to kick your ass. That was good, but I'm mad. Um, music nerds in the audience will get that one. Uh, uh, for those of you that don't, just look up John Cage. Um, so, uh, God, that was really fucking good i'm I'm actually kind of mad about how good that was um so uh anyway um you get brought into this room and it is like right on time right you are led to a seat it's got a desk in front you know those like uh those uh college speaking auditoriums that have the fucking you know the seats with the desks attached and all that you know i didn't go to a real college so i don't i don't fucking know what those look like but uh i've seen them in movies um, he kind of leads you to that. You never and, took a uh, math class at Friends? No, fuck that. I took all my math credits at a place where it didn't matter. <laughs> um, that way I didn't have to pay a thousand, a uh, thousand dollars to flunk out of a class. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, um, kind of sits you down and says, sure, assigned seat. And he sits right next to you, right? Oh, cool. You'll be my expert escort i yeah. pull the little desk out fold it up in front pull out my notepad flip over the empty page get my pen ready and uh huh? yeah he lets out just the faintest hint of a sigh as he presses on his ear for a second and then you see him just just sit there perfectly upright staring blankly forward um you, as soon as you reach your arm towards him, he snaps his head towards it and goes, focus on the stage. And then he just slowly goes back to that. Uh, and kind of as you... Make sure you're okay, but all right. <laughs> I, love how, I love how Trinix is just like, fuck it, I don't care if you're scary. Uh, am, I wrong for, am I wrong for turning Trinix into a child soldier? Maybe. Maybe. Is he an entertaining one? Oh, hell yeah. Um, so you're, you're, um, looking at the stage and, uh, and, uh, the doctor comes out, right? Uh, let me pull up his name so that I can fucking, uh, ba 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 it is, sorry, um, uh, Jabbar Alphonse, yeah. Um, so Dr. Alphonse comes out and, uh, you know, there's a, light applause and he comes up to the um microphone and uh kind of taps the microphone to hear that it's on he says good uh all of my colleagues are here in attendance and uh those of you who are not in attendance of course are uh not my colleagues and there's like a slight uh wave of chuckle over and says we have a young member in our audience i'd like you all to give a warm artiste welcome to uh trinix lorna a prodigy uh, in his own right, uh, the progeny of um, Thomas Lor- or not Thomas Lorna, um, your dad's name. That's another one. A progeny, progeny, uh, no, a progeny of uh, Professor Lorna. Um, hopefully, he will carry his same genius. He should be potentially working on the project for uh, working on the project with me. 
And, uh, you know, there's there's a, a very polite round of applause for you, you know. Um, I wave to them all, like, hey, how you doing? Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> goes, all right. <clears throat> With that out of the way, today's symposium is going to be about that project exactly. Specifically, brain chemistry and stem cell. And I am not going to bore the stream with things that I do not understand. I am going to gloss over a 45-minute symposium, as much as I'm sure you all would love to hear me bullshit about brain science that I don't know for 45 minutes. Please do. Actually, um, continue. Yeah, yeah, right? Um, I'd love you, to hear you bullshit. You're really yeah, good at it. Yeah, right? Everyone right? else agrees with me, right? Yeah, yes. yeah. That, that of we should of see. Course. They all want to hear the forty-five mm -hmm. minute. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, dissertation. Yeah. Continue. Please. Yeah, I totally agree. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Blink twice if you're being held hostage, Daniel. Okay, okay. There we go. Good, good, good. Um, but yeah. So um, we get uh, you know we get kind of a a, a clip afterwards. You know, um, finally where he finishes and he goes like, uh, in short, that's why I'm based. No, uh, he he kind of. Um, Kind of goes, uh, and um, well, hopefully with these advancements in the field, we should be able to make marked progress by the end of the year, hitting our quarterlies, and of course, making sure to help humanity for better. And, uh, you know, uh, thank you, everyone. You know, there's a whole lap and all that, you know. Um, and, uh, you know, everyone starts to get up. And, and the notes you took, right, uh, go ahead and make me just a flat... Uh, what would that be? Intelligence? Is that what it's called in this system? Guys, I've, it's been a long week. Uh, yeah. Yes. Make me a flat intelligence roll, just to see how, like, good your, um, your, uh, what you call it is. How good your, um, note-taking is. Woo! Yeah, you did straight-up Cornell shit on that. Yeah, no, you, you took good notes. Uh, you very much understand what he's saying. And the Why core did principle... you just remind me of Cornell note-taking? I wanted to forget that. Fuck you. <laughs> I hated him too. Um, no, uh, so basically what you kind of... Uh, oh, my cat is skittering around. Um, what, what you get from this is uh, they want to use stem cells, surgery, bionics, and um, essentially reconstruct nerve endings and neural pathways in the brain literally in the brain as in they want to basically turn the brain into a stem cell farm of sorts to encourage natural growths into neural pathways that people may have lost this should help recreate uh this should help a uh what, what they're claiming it'll help is a it'll help coma patients b it'll help addiction right by re by reforming those pathways that might have been cut off through uh dopamine abuse right um c did i, did I do one two three or abc i don't care c um they uh are supposedly going to help with memory loss and help reconstruct those pathways and uh d they also should be able to increase cognitive capacity in people right um so that's kind of what the whole lecture was about right um, probably at this point, Rainier, um, looks at you and stands up and says, All right, you're coming with me. Professor wants to speak to you. Oh, good. I was waiting for that part. That would be the fun part. Yeah, and you're kind of led oh. through this crowd, and as, as you're walking through this crowd, you get so many handshakes, you know, people being like, uh, people being like, Oh, oh, pleasure to meet you. Your father was a great man. And like, oh, yes, I... I've heard good things about your father. Never got to work with him. And like, you know, like, sorry for your loss and all that, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, yeah, sure. Keep it. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And it's, I'm, I'm talking like, like probably 30 or 40 people kind of not accost you, but are, are very much like, like, oh, I want to like make an introduction. You catch none of their names. Like, like it's yeah. one of those whirlwind situations you know yeah. Trinix is going through all this trying to be all nice and he like I have a clue who my father is yeah <laughs> because they're all like your dad's awesome or like yeah sure thank you um yeah awesome I thank you <laughs> yeah yeah 
Um, probably the one that sticks out uh, most to you is, uh, um, you know, your father was a, a boon to the research team. I have full confidence that you'll be able to be one too, you know, that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, you're, you're led kind of to the back. And uh, you see Dr. Jabbar Alphonse, and he's got this warm smile, you know, kind of, um, he peers over his nose at you and goes, Ah, Trinix, pleasure to see you, or should I call you Mr. Lorna? Kind of gives you a smile. Oh, Trinix is fine, dude. That's, kinda. I, I, I'm fine with that. We're just keep it friendly, casual. Yeah, he kind of nods and goes, well, hopefully by the end of this you'll be Dr. Lorna. Kind of, um kind of gives you a little bit of a light punch on the shoulder, like one of those, like, there you go. You know what I mean? Um, and uh, I think at this point, we are going to cut to Scene and Pain Dexter. Scene, Pain Dexter. How you guys... So, did you follow the car? I'm assuming we were in a car... I was in a car with a Scene. Otherwise... Yeah. Following a car would be a very tough thing to do. Oh, yeah, no, I'm assuming that you were, too. Yeah. Yeah. Were we in the van, or did we take the muscle car? Could have been either. Two passengers, capacity on either. I don't know, could you convince Serum to let you take his child? The child that that I allowed him to have after it was passed to me? Oh, dude, you have free reign to drive that car whenever. (laughs) Serum, Serum likes you. Yeah. No, Sarah Not I, likes likes you, but he yeah, we get along, he respects we, the fuck out of you. Because the van is recognizable, sports mm-hmm. car not so much, muscle car not so much. So uh, we'll probably get in that. Okay. Um, and yeah, we'll just try to keep follow him. I mean, I know I'm not gonna be able to get into the place. I heard yeah. you do that from the from the get go, but to satisfy mm-hmm. uh, suzerain, we're like, yeah, we'll follow. We'll at least go to where it takes him. So. You follow this white for purple, right? Um, on the way to the uh, on the way to the place, the for purple goes in, and then the door shuts, right? Yeah. You probably start to you know drive away, or do you? I mean, you're right by Jewish Quarter. Do you guys make a pit stop? Do you head straight back? What do you do? We'll wait for a bit. Uh, okay. Outside, see if he, you know, anyone leaves or goes other than that car. Yeah, you wait for a bit, uh, and both of you make me a awareness notice check. Nice. Damn. Pain Dexter, <laughs> you see creeping up on you guys. There is a. Uh, there is a. Um, a uh what do you call it a unmarked there we go an unmarked white wolf car uh kind of creeping up on you guys wherever you're parked we've got wolf shaped pigs (laughs) should have brought the van yeah launcher (laughs) and as it kind of creeps up is a good idea continue yeah it goes and it parks Right behind you. <laughs> like a pain Dexter, should we just drive off or see if they're going to get out? We should probably just drive off. Maybe we can have some lunch before we uh, go back and tell them that, well, uh, they went inside and nothing <laughs> happened. Mm-hmm. I know the perfect place. I will attempt to drive off. <laughs> You start to drive off, and then, whoop, you know, single siren, lights on, Put typical traffic stop shit. <laughs> I'm going to kill these guys. I'm sorry. I'm going to kill them. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll pull over. Okay. You pull over, and you, it, first of all, you wait like 20, 30 seconds for someone to get out of the car, right? Uh... And then finally, when someone gets out of the car, it's uh, it's a very, like, very white wolf looking dude. He's got the uh, he's got the starched white uh, police shirt on with the bl- with the red highlights. He's got the cap on, like the baseball cap for like the the kind of um, security sort of look, you know. 
got the shades on, got the bright fucking gleaming badge, pressed fucking khakis, the work boot or the combat boots, the whole nine, right? Uh, you know, um, kind of walks up, data slab in hand, and um, kind of, you know, goes up. Is your window already down or? Oh yeah, I'm taking on the normal civilian role now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, kind of walks up and goes, um, Howdy, is that car, uh, registered? Oh, yeah, it would be registered. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, license and registration, or sin and registration, please. Hand it all over. I'm assuming you have, like, a fake sin. Yeah. Uh, probably goes, uh, you too. Sidecar. Sin, please. (laughs) I think... (laughs) He would have some sort of sin, but sure, not his. Almost own. every edge runner has a fake yeah. sin. That's, yeah. Oh yeah, no, I I yeah. just take it for granted that you guys probably have fake sims or sins. If you guys like have any scrutiny put on them, it's probably like flimsy. If you don't like purchase a fake sin, but I think like you guys could make fucking clone sins real easy. Yes, I that is a thing that I would be yeah, I was like, for Cash everybody can do that. right there. Okay. Yeah, and we'll like say... dropping some heavy traffic behind it, like Payne, mm-hmm. his name is definitely Thomas, and Thomas very much enjoys visiting animal shelters, but never mm-hmm. picking up a pet because he understands that he doesn't have enough money to take care of a pet. The pet's a very big responsibility, but his search also... history is filled with pet smart shit. Like <laughs> also the other thing is that uh Payne doesn't pick up any pets physically because he has gorilla arms and he's scared of of crushing them. Uh this he doesn't want to lineate. Um but no, uh, I, 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 also a voice set it up, I also set it up to where he always looks at the chihuahuas like the smallest possible dog mm, available. I don't think this is all on the sin. Yeah, no, that's not. No, no, a sin. A, a sin is profile. just the. Yeah, exactly. The sin is just. Well, the it sin is for uh, social identification number. Yes, and oh, here is maybe if dig through his search history, that's what. They so would see. <laughs> sure, I get you, and and just to let you guys know what a sin includes, just so you can kind of be agog in horror for half a second, your social identification number contains your government name, your place of birth your current residence, your credit score, your criminal record, anything that has to do with any money transaction in the last 24 hours, uh, and governments can access it that you sends, organizations can access it for the last 72 hours. The only way to make transactions without them is with cred sticks, right? So it's kind of like cash, you know what I mean? Like ed sticks are gonna be the only way. If you do anything from a bank account that's linked to your sin, any organization that can access a sin, which, by the way, are notoriously easy to access. Like, literally, you've probably accessed hundreds of people's sins just in research and free time cash. They're super easy. They give blood type. They give uh, physical statistics, updated photos from the nearest photo that was taken of them. It's like Big Brother shit. Like, so it is everything- a... Everything that it's a, a digital government footprint. could right could get their hands on today, all wrapped into one little spot. Yeah. Rather than um, talking to the hospitals and then the credit people and then all of mm. that, it's just all in one little spot. Yes, and it is uh, the best part about it. It's all on blockchain, baby. So it'll never go away. Um, not unless you destroy every single uh, computer that has record of that. I feel um, like. That's something that would be fun to see somebody try and do. That'd be hilarious. Yeah, right. Um, so yeah, uh, they get your he gets your sins right. Um, kind of looks them over, hands them back to you, and goes. So, a couple of folks like you. What were you doing? Um, outside of that artist entrance. You said well, I'll like tell you what I. Juice. This Say is right what? by the Jewish quarter? Yeah. Right by the Jewish quarter, yeah. No, I, I kind of like put a hand, I'm so sorry. I put a hand on Payne's uh, thigh, and I'm like, 
Well, my boyfriend and here were trying to find a place to eat, but then he decided that he suddenly wanted some weird, I, I list off some Jewish dish, Yeah. <clears throat> but I'd never heard of it. So we were having an argument about if it even exists. So we were going to look it up. So we pulled over and I'm just, I'm make me a check. Yeah. yeah make I'm, me a check. Persuasion and fast talk. Yeah. <laughs> kind of looks goes, uh, mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> Now, so we um, pulled over at the nearest spot so we could have a civil discussion while we're not driving. Kind of looks and goes, now, uh, you wouldn't be happening to, uh, you wouldn't happen to, um, harbor any ill resentment or, uh, ill will towards Artis, would you? Artis? You mean the people that bring all the modern stuff to us that advances our society? Why would I have ill will for that? Kind of goes... <laughs> And he kind of goes, um, well, kind of looks in, goes, you and your uh, boyfriend there. Uh, let's just say that um, maybe you look like some kind of folks who uh, do some things on the side. The That's only thing I do on the side is argue with. Yep. Look. I want <laughs> something simple to eat. I'd have an idea of what I want to eat. I ask, what do you want to eat? What do I get back? I don't know. What do you want to eat? I don't. I have to make the, the decision. And when I do, it's like, oh, I don't think that thing exists. I just want a fucking lunch, man. Make me a persuasion and fast talk, but with a plus how about, five. How about perform? Perform with a plus five. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so that'd be a 20. Yeah. So he looks, looks in and goes... All right, and he kind of somewhat aggressively slaps the top of your car. He goes, I'm going to let you guys off with a warning. But just know this. I followed you following that for purple. And next time there's not going to be a warning. Understood? Of course, officer. Sure. Yeah. He, uh turns around and uh, he's walking off and he kind of holds up his finger and goes, oh, hold on. He takes your vehicle identification and tosses it in the car. He goes, forgot about that. Sorry. And he walks back to his car. Turns on the engine and drives past you guys real <laughs> slow. Looking at you the whole time behind those sunglasses. <clears throat> I purposely he gets... have my head facing mm -hmm. to pain as if I'm, like, still having the argument. Yeah, yeah. And I'll just keep shaking my head now. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, he finally gets past. Gets around the block. What you guys, what you guys, uh, you guys got a reaction to that? We're gonna go get some food, and as we do, Yeah, like, let's, let's get the fuck out of here. Yeah, like, yeah. I'm gonna harbor ill will to anyone, it's those fucks. <laughs> I take us to uh, my last favorite restaurant. Wanna... Last place I want to have ill will towards is a bunch of people that gave me the best meal I've ever had. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. So, no, um, take us to my favorite place in the Jewish quarter for some really good food. What, Shimps? Oh, yeah, sure. Shimps, if that's a really good oh, okay. place. Shimps was the bar that you guys were at before you blew up Nemo. Oh, no, this would just be like an actual, like, just little, I don't know, joint, deli joint. Ah, I don't know. Probably, probably. Cats deli. Yeah. Probably, probably, um, it's probably a place just called Pierogi, and it has yeah. the best fucking pierogies in town. Because I spent a lot of time there, so I definitely like to keep track of being worth, you know, where the best pierogies in town are. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, yeah, and uh, so you guys, uh, we'll, we'll cut away from that, right? Yeah. We'll cut back into Artis. Um, Trinix, you have been brought to a office. It is, um... Dr. Jabbar Alphonse's office, right? And um, as you're kind of uh, as you're kind of in Jabbar Alphonse's office, um, you see that um, there is uh, you know all along his wall are fucking bobbleheads of great scientists. There's like an Albert Einstein one. There's a fucking um, there's a fucking uh, uh, 
Wow, name three scientists. You're a real fan of science. Name three. three name your three favorite scientists. There's, there's Carl not Sagan. Times. Huh? Carl Sagan, Sagan. Yeah. There's a Neil Bohr, a Niels Bohr one. There's Brian a Neil deGrasse Tyson. Fermi. Neil deGrasse Tyson. A Fermi one. Yeah. Right. Pretty much any right. scientist you can think of. There is one of them on the wall. There's like a Curie. There's like a, a couple Bill ones. Nye. There is not a Bill Nye. There's not a Bill there Nye. are no science communicator Man. ones. So Neil deGrasse and uh, Carl Sagan. Carl well, Sagan. Well, they're scientists that actually worked on really big science projects, though. That's fair. Bill uh, Nye I mean, is a like communicator. De- yeah. 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 Neil deGrasse was instrumental in reclassifying Pluto. You know. Yeah. Um, fuck him and never mind. Fuck uh-huh. him. Bill Nye taught us all that science yes. is cool. Yes, but I I agree, Amy. I agree. I <laughs> but also, a scientist is not going to look at Bill Nye and go, "He's my hero." You know. I would. Okay. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah. 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 Um. But yeah, you you walk in, um, and you see this wall of bobbleheads. It is like unavoidable to watch. Uh, Rainier is with you, by the way. Um, as you walk into Doctor Alphonse's office, um, you know. And, uh, you know, Alphonse goes, huh, you're looking at the, uh, bobbleheads. Yeah, um, I'm a collector. A lot of heroes up there. A lot of people who, um, made human life better, easier, safer, um, more reasonable, more civilized. There's an Oppenheimer bobblehead, but his his head is just a nuclear bomb. (laughs) Ha! Yeah, I love that. More reasonable. Um, uh, it's a it's a weapon from a more civilized age. <laughs> yeah, and um, kind of uh, kind of um, looks uh, and uh, goes, please sit. You know. So that uh, first question, that walk thing that they called water, mm-hmm. it had no taste. It was weird, but kinda, it was good. Yeah, he kind of smiles and goes. That's what water's supposed to taste like. Oh. It was real good. Mm. You guys? Mm. For not no chemical. Yeah, he kind of goes, no chemicals, no water. It was uh, originally water that we put iodine in and then chlorinized it, put fluoride in it. And then, after we did that, we put it into an evaporator, and then we put it into an apparator, and we slow drip fed it into a tank. Uh, from there, we mounted that tank into the vehicle, fresh water, whenever somebody wants it. And that is how all of the water here is treated. No wastewater either. We only pull from the Amstel, which <laughs> might as well be wastewater, but the things that we do with that water, hardly recognizable. Matter of fact, you could take, you could take the hydrogen and oxygen from that water in the Amstel, separate it and recombine it. It would be just about as atomically pure. That's awesome. Kind of, uh... Oh, go ahead. That's just... So, am I working in this office? The one next... Where are we working at? (laughs) No, 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 no. Today is, um... Today is... Well... Have you ever gotten a job, Trenix? Um... Sort... I, I don't know. I just show up and start doing things, and everybody's like, oh, you're cool. Come do more here. And it goes, hmm, hmm. Well, uh, most first days at a job have a thing called orientation. Uh, today will be your orientation. We won't get right into the work yet. There's formalities. and you know, He kind of wiggles his fingers as he says it, like this kind of very almost playful sort of situation. Uh, as he reaches under the table and pulls out a stack of actual paper, Sets it on the table and goes, um, uh, it's like nothing on a data slate, you know. And he goes, uh, and, and this stack of paper, about yay thick, about an inch, maybe an inch and a half high. And he goes, today is going to be, well, a boring day. A lot of our paperwork happens digitally. Um, we prefer to have physical copies of every record um, with original signatures. Um, printed signatures sometimes just don't cut it. You know how it goes. And uh, yeah. he says, um, now I'll walk you through, through all of this paperwork, but 
Before anything else, I would like to explain what this paperwork is. Now, this paperwork, some of it is procuring you an actual sin because, well, we've, we've looked into you and you do not have a sin number. Uh, well, you do not have a uh, social identification number. We can fix that for you. Along with that, um, we also are planning on using this paper for uh, setting up um, for setting up um, payment into an account. We are more than willing to put together an account for you. Uh, we'll call it a uh, wellness benefit or a wellness trust. Uh, we're going to split this into three accounts. One for you to spend immediately, one for a pre-approval to spend from, and one that you won't be able to access until you are in your older years. Somewhat of a uh, safety net uh, for Euro dollars, uh, if you understand. Okay, question about that. Is the money for stuff to do the... Re like, actual oh. acquisition equipment and stuff like that? Oh, or is this no, no, personal? No, no. Uh, I'm, oh, I, equipment acquisition? No, no. We, you, that's not your job. That's the boys down in R&D and the folks in HR, the folks in accounting. And, you know, you, This guy is getting set up with a whole identity. Jeez. Yeah, he's like, you... And a 401k. Yeah, he's like, you... I can promise you one thing. You will not want for any equipment. And if you do want for any equipment, it will be fixed post-haste. Kind of, uh, however, of course, all equipment will stay on company campus. Um, well, I, yeah, that's obvious. Kinda, yeah. Yeah, he kind of nods and goes, I'm, I'm glad you're tracking. Also, in this paperwork is one more thing. It's the uh, bulk of this paperwork. Have you ever heard of an NDA? Is that like a sports thing? I don't know much about sports. I mean, people talk about sports and stuff. And um, Is that like a sports league or something? I don't know. He kind of says, and he kind of smiles and chuckles and goes, if, if you're joking, very funny. And if you're not, tragic, but I'll inform you. He kind of goes, uh, an NDA is a non-disclosure agreement. It's exactly what it sounds like. It means that anything that you find here, that you find out about, that you see, that you hear about, is completely and utterly proprietary knowledge. And I mean anything, any conversations that we've had here, uh, even if it seems as personal and uh, innocuous as, oh, how was your day? Oh, it was fine. I had Thai food. Well, mentioning that Thai food to someone outside of the artiste facilities would be not only frowned on, but a breach of the non-disclosure agreement. Are you following me so far? Yeah, but um, what if I learned something cool medically here and I'm out there just living my life and somebody's hurt and I use the training to help somebody, does that violate the little sports thing? And he, he kind of, yeah, that's good. He says, um, he says, um, yes, matter of fact, um, I was meaning to talk to you about this. Now, this is completely your choice. However, we highly recommend that especially new fellows within the program um it is it's typically expected but not enforced that they stay within campus housing not going to assure you all of the amenities that you could want would be here uh from what i understand you're currently staying at a uh nightclub well yeah i i, I work there too and i help you um, good good heavens work. People. Work at a nightclub? I have a, a, a clinic as part of it that when people get hurt, I help them and fix them up. You know, I, I care about people, and it's like uh, that's what I do. It, it's easier if I'm there because if somebody comes in that's hurt, I can just thank you for get specifying you work. At, 
you you you're you're part of a clinic at a nightclub. Otherwise, yeah. that would take some really bad turn. Thank you. Yeah. Kind of um says and he kind of um says um right. Kind of his uh you know, he kind of uh rubs his uh bald chin, you know, uh, kind of plays with the um the uh kind of smooth skin underneath and it's at this point you realize because you've been looking into bioscopes for cash uh you realize that this guy has a bioscope um kind of um plays with like a little a little skin tag which is obviously he must have designed the skin tag to be there you know what i mean uh, and he kind of pauses and goes Hmm. Well, the offer for staying on campus dormitories is always open. Uh, if you ever wish to do this, um, please let me know. Otherwise, this non-disclosure agreement, uh, please peruse at your leisure, but we will need a signature uh, by before you leave here. Uh, this non-disclosure agreement, the agreement for employment, the identity, all of that, you can get that set up today, and we'll get it set up in this office. Take your time, I'll just be sitting here behind my desk, uh, going through some emails while you read. And as you look okay, at so oh, I'm, uh, I know most people, when they read, you know, the fine print on enrolling in a new service or whatever, they just kind of skim through it. Dude, I am strategically reading each word, analyzing yeah. each, like, in depth, like, okay, so if I want to do this, this mm -hmm. is, I can't, you know, analyzing the whole thing while I'm reading. Yeah, reading and this takes you well over an hour, and uh, you can tell that both eyes are kind of on you the whole time. Like, it's never enough that you can, like, look at them and be like, hey, can you stop? But, like, it's very clear both of them are kind of paying attention to you this whole fucking I'm hour. Luckily, I don't notice them at all. I'm focused yeah. on the current task, and yeah. I don't care. <laughs> so, things to consider about this NDA. One, it basically states that your digital presence... uh. They, the companies, uh, the, uh, the artiste conglomerate, um, is A, allowed to um, monitor your uh, digital footprint at all times for any sort of uh, information um, leak, you know. Um, B, it uh, mentions that um, it, it really does go over exactly what Jabbar Alphonse said, which is Anything that happens in the artiste dome, no matter how small, is not to be talked about outside of the artiste compound, right? Um, and then once we get to punishment, things get a little bit weird. Uh, enforcement, rather. Um, enforcement uh, will result, not could, will result in a freezing of all assets a freezing of one's sins number or sin number and also um immediate uh the way that they phrase it is immediate um immediate recommendation and uh initial appointment to information rehabilitation Okay, so be good. Or, ooh, that'll be entertaining. Okay. That'll be entertaining. God, God I love that. Ooh, that sounds hot. The guy looks <laughs> up, wait, what? <laughs> yeah. Uh, also, it prohibits any and all recording devices uh, on site. Um, all, any and all recording devices must be turned in. Uh, unless special permission is acquired um, at the front gate. Guess we need to shove something in your head that'll let you record. Oh, they've got contingencies for that too. Uh, anything like that on site 
uh, must be reported. If it is reported, it needs to be turned off um, by, uh, like, a po it needs to be disabled, not turned off, disabled, um, before entering the compound. If not reported and found with it, immediate expulsion of said device is enforced. Of the device. Not, not expulsion the of the person. No, no, no. They're going to rip it out of your head and destroy it. Well, shoot it out of your head at that point. Who's to say? Depends how valuable you are. Correct. That's a very astute observation. <laughs> no. You're so, not I need my brain. Yeah, yeah. So, Trinix, you look over this paperwork. It takes you about an hour. Uh, there are the classic sticky tabs um, everywhere where you need to initial and sign, and it is a lot. It's like 20, 30 places um, for every 10 pages, you know? And this thing's like 100 pages. Okay, so every five or so, I take my hand, shake it, and then go back. Yeah. And it, mm -hmm. It's just for dramatic. It doesn't really hurt. It's just more entertaining. And I'm like, every five, yeah. I'm just going to be like, ah, my hand. <laughs> just as a joke. Yeah, and the first couple, <laughs> Dr. Alphonse laughs. But the joke gets very old very fast. <laughs> um, but yeah, you signed the thing? Yeah, why not? Sounds like fun. Okay. We'll see how, how far we can push the boundary. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. I like how, I like, because, because, Scott, you know, this is probably a bad idea. But I love the fact that you're like, all right, we're going to do it anyway. Okay. Hell yeah. So you get this all signed, and finally when it's all done, Dr. Alphonse goes, ha, ah, excellent. Uh, thank you very much. And he kind of takes all this and slides open his desk and sets it back down and closes it and goes, welcome to Artis. And more importantly, welcome to Anodyne Diagnostics. And he reaches his hand over to give you a handshake. Yeah. You know, he, he like shakes he's your head. Suddenly, like, like, this is awesome. Type. Yeah. He says, now, before we get all of your uh, social identification number stuff sorted out, um, we are going to, uh, Rainier here is uh, going to um, have a word with you. Um, he's going to show you his office. And uh, Rainier stands up and just, <clears throat> if you follow me, is this dude going to be with me all the time? Because he is a blast. All right, let's go, dude. <laughs> I, holy shit, I love that. Yeah, Rainier uh, stands up. You know, he opens the door and he kind of leads you through the hallway. Um, and he leads you down the hallway, down another hallway, down another hallway. And you're starting dude, to you realize... Dude, you the legwork thing, dude. I can... This is awesome. I start to feel it, and after a while, it's, my legs are going to, you know, not look yeah. as good as yours, but get close. Yeah, and um, he, uh, and, and, like, this place is like a fucking labyrinth. He also doesn't respond to that, right? But this place is like a goddamn labyrinth. You feel like a fucking rat in a lab, you know what I mean? Like, you're not the scientist, you're the rat right now. Um, as you're walking through all these plain clean white corridors uh lights turn on as you walk under them and within five feet of them and then turn off once you walk five feet away so it's this weird kind of like the hallway ahead of you is dark until you walk into the area it's very disorienting right um and finally you get to a small hallway that has a, um, a, like a metal door that's almost uncharacteristic of the rest of the building. It looks almost like a fire exit, right? Kind of opens it, and there's this tight, concrete hallway with incredibly bright fluorescent lights. And the hallway's just thin enough that someone like Rainier can fit in. So it's a tight squeeze for you. You know what I mean? It's, it's like not a, it's not a fun hallway to walk in. And at the end of the way, there is a door with a gold plate on it that says, um, that says, um, uh, P. Rainier, right? Um, and, uh, he says, after you. 
Just open the door. Okay. Yeah. You um, walk down this hallway that almost feels dingy. I mean, it's clean, but there's something not super great about it. You know, it feels kind of kind of sketch. You open the door. You see an office that is somewhat dark, right? Um, there is a metal desk that almost feels more like a, an interrogation table than like a, an interrogation room desk than somewhere where someone conducts work. Uh, there's a chair on either side, and in the very center of that table, you see that set of glasses. Um, he closes the door behind you as you walk in, and you hear the bolt lock, right? It says, This looks like a comfy little office you got here. Really you look back at him. Awesome. You look back at him. He smirks. He says, Please, have a seat. You see this garbage fucking metal folding chair. Looks uncomfortable. He doesn't have a chair. No cushion? Okay, I'll be fine. Yeah. <sighs> he, uh, he walks to the other side and kind of drags his hand around the edge of the table. Gets to the other side and stands and looks at the glasses and looks at you. Says... I don't care what shitty little operation you're a part of. I don't care the people that you associate with. To be quite frank, you could live or die. You could die in my office right now. I wouldn't give a fuck. But one thing I will not allow is little pissants like you walking in here thinking they're a hot shit edge runner going to crack open Artis like a fucking carcass like a pirate looking for treasure kind of you know crack open a treasure chest grabs the glasses well, it, it is a tre this place is awesome i don't know what you're talking about i found has, those on the street oh did you and he uh grabs them and goes suppose you won't mind and cash you get feed again you see the glasses are looking in this tiny little fucking interrogation room looking area. There's a single light hanging and slightly swaying on the ceiling that you can see. And you hear Trinix and a man, that man, that took the glasses in the first place, right, talking. He goes, this goes for you, and this goes for everyone that you're currently associating with. If one single blade of grass in this facility goes awry. If a single whispered word gets out, if I see even the slightest compromise of vulnerability, you're not going to be dealing with Dr. Alphonse. You're going to be dealing with me. And I am not a pleasant man. And he crumples are, the glasses in his hand. You're talking about the sport thing? Before, just before he does that, I'm like, you're getting an addendum on that little sports team NDR thing? Yeah, and he crushes the glasses in his hand. Your feed cash goes dead. Uh, by the way, Suzerain? Oh, fuck, oh, fuck, oh, fuck, oh, fuck. Um, I have a question. Wait, wait, chill, wait. Girl. Wait, who, who decided to send him in with a bug? When was that decision made? Was that like a spur of the moment thing? It was. <laughs> I was going in as the glasses dude. We tried. <laughs> I've been here twice. Question. I had glasses. Did, did, I was going to say, did you wear glasses the first time? Yes. Nate, do it again. <laughs> So um, there are a couple of different ways to handle certain types of situations. And generally, the smarter your opponent, the more you want to lean towards, great, it worked once. Never, ever, ever do it again. Mm. Yeah, well, it didn't exactly work the first time I thought I'd work some <laughs> of the bugs. Yeah. So um, anyway, he crumples these glasses and you see that 
a little bit of blood pours out of his hand. But on closer inspection, it's not blood. It's like black. He opens his hand and it just fucking coagulates and just seals over his hand. And before your very eyes, just a new layer of skin starts weaving itself. Uh, I was going to... Decepticon. I was going to repair... Well, never mind. Never mind. He says, um... I hope that we have an understanding here. Yeah. You crushed a pair of glasses I found on the street. Good for you. (laughs) Shit, you're still going with that. Make me a cool check. This fucker over here. Oh! Every time. Every nice. time without fail. Incredible. Yeah, you're not phased by him. He kind of looks at you and he goes, Well, I suppose that you're going to learn your lesson sooner rather than later. So let's. I haven't yet! Us- yeah. Is that out loud? No. I, okay. I, I shouldn't say that. No. <laughs> <laughs> that would be horrible. Um, He kind of goes, he smirks and goes, all right, follow me. He uh, opens the door. Uh, he unlocks the door with this key that he produces and uh, opens it and, you know, heads out first. Um, And yeah. You guys are led back to, um, you guys are led back to, um, the primary area where, uh, Dr. Jabbar Alphonse, um, kind of, uh, says, um, you know, uh, thank you, Rainier. I appreciate you. Um, um, I appreciate you. Um, I'm sure you have other site-wide business to attend to. Kind of goes, absolutely. Kind of looks at you real hard for a second, Trenix, and goes, have a nice day, Mr. Lorna. All right, see you when I leave. Yeah, he, um, he heads off. And, uh, Dr. Alphonse goes, um, yes, uh, HR. Sometimes, uh, uh, he's, he's kind of like, HR, uh, never a pleasant visit, but, um, I'm sure that, uh, whatever he had to say was at least enlightening. Yeah, he's got a wonderful place for him to do his work. It's just perfect for him. You know, I just... (sighs) Whose Kool-Aid did you drink? Because it wasn't (laughs) mine! (laughs) Right? He drank his own. He Bear grills it. He mixed Kool-Aid with his own piss. For real. I mean, Scav drank the the Kool Aid Lucky made, and we saw how that is going. This <laughs> is different. This continue. Ace and it got passed down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, this is spate levels of just not giving a fuck. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah. So we're gonna. So so. Um, Trinix, uh, it takes you a couple hours to get all this stuff set up, and it's a blur of paperwork, getting your photo taken. The only thing of note is they ask, hey, do you want a first name that is not Trinix on your sin? Uh, probably Dr. Uh, Alphonse goes, uh, it, it probably would be, um, well, Trinix is a very unique first name, but maybe a middle name instead, and a a more traditional uh, first name. Uh, That's always been my name. That was what was on the little metal thing. No, I like it. He kind of, kind of goes, okay, um, Trinix it is. And, uh, yeah, he kind of Sucks his, like, bottom jaw in a little bit. You can tell he's not super happy with that decision, but he doesn't say anything, you know. Um, And yeah, you are brought through this whirlwind of paperwork and you are escorted out of the, um, you are escorted out of the building um, to the Faperbal that you arrived in. 
There is no Rainier there. Um, you are uh, put in the car to the club. It's about four o'clock at this point. I get another water because that first one was. Yeah, it's it's like a um, producing water. You know what I mean? Um, and yeah, absolutely. And yeah, you are brought back to the bar. Um, <laughs> Lucky, this is probably about the time you roll into the bar. You've had other business to take care of, I'm sure. Of course. Um, yeah. Uh, you roll into the bar, uh, and as you approach the bar, uh, I, like as you pull up to the bar, Scav's probably giving you a ride on his motorcycle because he bought a motorcycle finally. He got around Yay! to doing it. He bought um, the thing. He did, and I uh, probably um, you guys both see it at the same time. There is a cream white fapurble, um out front of the bar, and uh, out of it gets Trinix. Um, Scav probably goes, uh, ah, shit! I can't whistle. My lips are too dry. Uh, he does that like woo whistle. You know what I mean? And right. um, yeah. there, that's not yeah. a whistle. No. At all. I didn't want to actually whistle. There into you the mic. go. Thank you. No, I didn't want to whistle into the mic because it's going to be loud. I can whistle, but did anyone hear that? Yeah. I think my yeah. mic cut that off. I. Oh. No, yours it cuts off for whatever reason. Mine will pick up the whistle all right, it seems. Yeah, what the yeah. fuck? You have some really to... heavy, like, noise cancellation there. I need to stop that noise cancellation. I There's a lot of shit that it's like, yeah. Yeah. Um, what happens if I just turn off, uh, noise cancellation? Uh, how does this sound? Hold the on. same. Yeah, no, it's still not picking that up at all. I'll nope. troubleshoot this after game. <laughs> I don't need to waste the audience's time with that. Um, or your time. Your guys' time is valuable to me. Um, but, uh, oh, wait, I can just turn down the decibel sensitivity. Nope, still not. Anyway. Continuing on, um, yeah, you see them pull up, and uh, Trinix gets out of the Faperble, and the Faperble drives away. Trinix, one thing you notice, this is an autonomous vehicle, of course. My brain froze, what? <laughs> yeah, it's an autonomous vehicle, like, uh, there's, there's, uh, no driver. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I still wave bye to him. Thanks for the <laughs> ride! Yeah. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, Scav kind of looks back at you, Lucky, and goes, Well, I'll be a goddamn. He's still alive. Hmm. I forgot that today was, uh, his orientation. Mm. I suppose we should, um... Well, let's just go see what they've done to him, she says. Yeah, and speaking of what they've done to you, Trinix, I want you to add two things to your inventory. One... You have a sin under uh, uh, under Trinix Lorna, and two, you have a bobblehead, uh, and this bobblehead is going to be of. Uh, hold on. Uh, let's see here. Um, fuck it. Let's go. Uh, Antonio Damasio. Uh, I don't know who this is, but I'm going to learn about them between game. Uh, apparently a neuroscientist. There we go. I'll put his name in chat. There um, it is. Trenix, um, Lucky walks up to you. She doesn't say a word. She puts a hand on your shoulder and is escorting you to her office. And oh, book okay. worry Go ahead. Oh, hi. No. Stop. <laughs> That's all she has to say. Before you guys get to the office, you are intercepted by at least Suzerain, who's like, oh my god, are you okay? Is everything okay? Silence. Silence? I meant to say silence, and I combined it with stop. Yeah. Silence, she says, putting up a hand, and continues mm -hmm. to guide trinix and up to her office yeah and probably she's like but but and like one of the dutchmen probably puts a hand in front of her chest and goes uh hold on you know <laughs> uh 
And you guys walk up to Lucky's office. So one of the things Lucky hasn't really told you guys, but makes sense if you think about it, the protections that are on our private rooms are the same protections that are on this office. Yeah. Anybody in, you know, any internal or external communications, gone. She's going to walk you into the office, shut the door. Uh, and um, before you can say anything, she is bug sweeping you. Uh, yeah, there are no bugs in your office. There are no bugs on, on Trinix. The bobblehead? The bobblehead is surprisingly unbugged. And the sin? If it's a physical uh, access card? Yeah, it's just a physical access card. I mean, there is a bug, but it's no more bugs than would be on any sin. It's like a, it's more of an access bug as opposed to, it, right, it's going to record access. any access. It's RFID. Yeah, exactly. It's not yeah. like a microphone or anything. Okay. She's looking over and goes, they didn't even take the courtesy to bug you. That is worrying. No. I got a new ID. How much do they know about us? Uh, none. <laughs> you, you were in eyeballs. It did you sheesh to be in classes. Say wait, say that again? What? Well, they knew somebody was on the other side of glasses, but glasses? I, I... What 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 are you talking about? So um Cash gave me some glasses. I don't know. She wanted me to wear some glasses. So I wore the glasses, but they took them away at the beginning and then they got all things happened. There's a moment where she has her eyes closed. Cash, you get a call. (laughs) (laughs) Do I know that Trinix came back? Uh, Yeah, you know that Trinix came back because uh, Suzerain runs down to the med bay and is like, he's back, he's back. She didn't let me say anything uh, to him. Uh, I, I think he's okay. And then probably right as she says that, you get the call. Are you picking up? I'm thinking about it. Hold on. (laughs) (laughs) You're going to be real mad. You're going to be real mad at me. Uh, I'm going to let it go to voicemail. And then... I'll call you back, like really quick, so because it goes to voicemail. It goes um, to voicemail. Did you just pull a power oh, move? What is? What no, is? Listen. Hold on, Cash. What is your voicemail? Um. Uh. What would it be? Uh. <laughs> Hi. You reached Cash. Uh. You could leave a message, but I'm probably not gonna listen to it because we all text now. That's really stupid. But you know, if it's super important, maybe call me again. And you know. Or not. I, I don't know. Also, uh, I've already got an extended warranty for my car insurance. Thank you very much. Uh, goodbye. Beep. Yes. And uh, then, realizing what I have done, I will quickly panic and then call you back. Mm. <laughs> Hello. Uh, ring, 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 mm. ring. Oh, yeah. No, she picks it up. Not No greeting. It's could you please bring Suzerain and yourself to my office very quickly? Thank you. Click. I should have never fucking picked up that goddamn phone. I, uh. to, I should have never called her back. I'm going to look over at Suzerain and be like, honey, Seen you get I'm in trouble. Huh? Oh, you're good. I, I was I was saying Seen gets a call as well. Continue. Yeah. So uh, I answer but well, first, first things first. What, yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what do you saying? say to Suzerain? Yeah. yeah, I'm, I'm gonna look over at Suzerain and go, "Honey, I'm in trouble, and I think you're in trouble by extension." 
we have to fuck her what in trouble for what oh because you know okay here's what it probably is it's probably the fact that we bugged uh trinix and didn't fucking get her super duper stamp of approval because you know she's gotta approve fucking everything all the time and we can't just you know look out for our own shit it's fine it's fucking fine we're just gonna go over there she's gonna chew ass a little bit and you know then we can go eat did trixie make gumbo uh she probably brought you a grilled cheese and went uh trixie wasn't making anything but uh, i made you a grilled cheese you're the best i'm so sorry that you're gonna get an ass chewing from homegirl, as I fucking nom on the fucking grilled cheese. Yeah, did you just like, call her homegirl? She's like, yeah, and she's like, homegirl can fucking chew whatever ass she wants, but she's not gonna chew my ass. Come on, let's fucking go. All right, fine. He already looks done, you know. Uh, <laughs> I scene, love her. So, scene, uh, you get a call. Oh, yeah, I uh, pick up. I'm like, go for scene. Yeah, and if by, you could by the way, in my office, and um, by the bring, way, what's that? Uh, scene in Pain Dexter, as long as you guys are cool with it, you're probably back in the bar. Yeah, no, once yeah. Okay, cool, cool, cool. I just wanted to make, make sure that that was kosher. Okay, sorry, go ahead. If you could please, um, bring Pain Dexter and, uh, <laughs> come up to the office for a moment. On my way. Click. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Why do they keep telling you to bring me places? That I have an agent, too. <laughs> That's a good point, actually. That's why I've been like. I'm surprised that's not a movie quote. Yeah, Scav, Scav is, uh, Scav is um, with you as well, Lucky. Uh, oh, I figured he, he continued. Yeah. yeah, he he came in with you. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> yeah, you guys um, all head up, and probably without even knocking, the first person in your room is Suzerain in your office, and she goes, "What?" <laughs> well, hold on. Not everyone's here for the meeting yet. She kind of oh, hops. Oh, that's and... meeting. Yeah. I wave her. Hey, see, I survived. Told she, you I'd come back. She runs up and gives you like a big fucking hug and is like, "That fucking dude. I what the what the <laughs> fuck is he? You know. Uh, Are you why? okay? Did he yeah. hurt you? Did he oh, hit you? No. Did he touch you? Did he what?" <laughs> no, I'm physically fine. Mentally <laughs> fine? Maybe. No, I'm fine. Yeah, he's like, well, what the fuck was that room then? Oh, that was head of security. Um, That's your all. classes are destroyed. I don't fine, I care about the glasses. I'm glad you're not destroyed. Oh, I told him I found him on the street. That's why he smashed oh, I'm, him. I'm sure he bought that one. And, oh, totally. Uh, yeah, they're just chatting. Probably this is about when uh, Scene and Payne Dexter get in the room. Do you call any of the other members who are at the bar, like Serum lives there, you know? Just PCs. Just PCs? Okay. Makes, gotcha. makes it easier that way. Just the edge sure. runners is a good way of putting it. Gotcha. Well, Serum's an edge runner. When's the last <laughs> time he did a job for us? Uh the one where you pulled the heist and he saved Cash's ass. <laughs> What's Darren's he done for my you homie lately? now? He's fine. What's he, he done him. for you lately? <laughs> That's right. What's what the fuck has anyone lately? else done for you lately? Well, let's see. What? Someone's gone into a giant death pit and come out alive. Someone's yeah. attempted to get our operative killed. Someone yeah. has tailed... Are you talking- Someone Sorry. has tailed um, someone. Uh, someone has yeah. tailed someone. And then Suzerain has been sidekicked to the person trying to get her operative killed. Um, uh, God. Yeah. Okay. I knew it. Fair enough. I knew it was going to be an ash chewing. I'm going to fucking text Suzerain with my internal agent and be like, watch out. Thar she blows. Yeah. And um, yeah, but, everyone's but- in here. But yeah, uh, mostly for the reason I have nothing. Serum wasn't a part of this whole thing no, to begin sure, with. Sure, sure. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's why I don't pull Pierre up here every time I get, every ah, yeah, chance I get, fair. you know? That's um, fair. But, no, uh, 
say, Alright, Trinix, what exactly happened? Oh, I went to the conference, which was informative as all get out. Like, the, what we'll be working on will be really cool, and it'll be awesome. And then I did paperwork, and then I got the identification card. That I have an ID now. Um, and then I came home. I feel like you're missing a few steps in there. He's like a puppy that let someone he chip can't, him. He can't say anything. If he says anything, then they're going to murder everybody. <laughs> he can't actually say anything. I did. Well, I said everything. You said everything that you were allowed to say. You can't actually tell us what happened. If they didn't abuse you in some way, we're not supposed to know. And if we find Which out... Which brings me to another question. Oh, you're talking about him Cash, trying to you threaten know this... me? Because of, she says with a, actually, yeah, no, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm going to still ask that, but I won't describe anything else. Because of, uh, you already know everything. Why do you do this? Just spit it out. Just do the thing. Just, just fucking yell at us. Yeah, Suzerain, Suzerain's like, if you want to be mad at me for giving a shit about Trinix, then you can fucking be mad at me. I don't I mean, care. Saying. She kind of goes, I must be getting obvious if you think I'm going to be f upset at this. Do you think, I mean, had you come to me and attempted to bug uh, Trinix, I would have said no? Probably. Why? We stand very little know. to lose. Except Honestly? Trinix! And yet, I, I, don't... I don't see... I didn't see you um, fighting Cash for doing that. Am I wrong? Well, Ash fucking does this shit for a living, okay? I She started to do something, so I went along with it. I'm fucking sorry. I'm not oh, blaming it. you. I'm just saying that you are right. Look, I got a cool Cash little bobblehead thing. does this for a living. Like, it was would behoove gaslight. me to trust the people that do these things. I. How does I are you doing a good job, or are response? you saying are you pissed off? Yeah, right. Like, no, where are you at? I'm... <laughs> As I said, it was unfortunate that it was found, but I suppose it's a good thing that. As little came from it as it did. That being said, Trinix, I was not able to find any bugs on you. Not even in this cool little statue thing? No, nor on your sin card. Being as... People put may, bugs on those? Uh, <laughs> Lucky just kind of looks at you like... Yeah... I do it. Yeah. <laughs> I've done it to people. I don't know what you're talking about. But she goes, so, yeah, but she nods. Um, probably says, be that as it may, I would be reticent to ask you to uh, disclose anything under your NDA. Considering the fact that if anyone could somehow remotely surveil a safe room like this, it would in fact be Artis. So let's just leave it at that. Turns to, uh... Yeah, I see you, motherfucker. <laughs> I'm looking at you... Sorry, I'm looking, looking at Zappa because he won't shut up. Oh, I hear him at my door. Oh, no, he's not. He's uh, he's right by me. Then what was meowing at my door two seconds ago? That was hey, me. motherfucker. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah, yeah. But turns to uh, scene and uh, the thing, the person, pain. 
Wow. <laughs> the thing. Jesus Christ. Let me wow. see your teeth. Some new low for pain. Let me see your teeth. <laughs> Moving on. Okay. Uh, right. Yeah. What? <laughs> you two, I'm assuming, tailed like we'd agreed. Oh, attempted. Protected by White Wolf. White Wolf protecting our teeth. But... Who yeah. could have guessed? Yeah, they were all the way up our ass. Mm. All right. Well, I'm assuming you'll be working in neuroscience. Don't say anything. That would break a NDA. <laughs> she says, <laughs> but but what? she would she would either she was should nod and then she'd shake her head. Oh, we're up. gonna do a lot. We're gonna. Mm -hmm. revolutionize yep. the world this is gonna be awesome i'm oh, glad honey. you're being as general as you can possibly be thank you <laughs> now that being said i would i have a question though the whole point of going there and learning is dude in the basement um <laughs> So you talk like we have a body in the basement or something. <laughs> oh, it's no, weekend he's... at it's weekend at Lucky's. He's yeah. tapping his finger. It's okay. Um. So when I learned how to do that, we might have troubles then because I think that's going over the bound. I'm trying to push the border and see how far I can go, but that's going to be jumping over the border. Our goal for having you there is to find a way to fix Hank. Yeah, 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 I know. But the sport thing they had me sign um, <laughs> says that I can't... Like, if I find somebody sick on the road and I learn something from them, I can't use it on some random sick dude that's like, oh, I need to make him feel better. As a medical professional, that kind of rubbed me the wrong way. But whatever. I'm still going to heal people with what I learned. When it comes time for you to... <clears throat> the end of... Then I suggest Scav, you were Scav as ready probably as says, you could possibly uh, be. Scav probably says, uh, hey, uh, babe, you got something stuck in your throat there? With, like, this big cheesy grin on his face. Yeah, she kind of looks, wraps him on the forehead with her ring mm -hmm, <laughs> in a mm -hmm. playful manner. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just. So, that being said, when it comes time, just make sure you're ready. Yeah, that's why I'm telling you, so that you're ready when of course. they blow up the club. <laughs> uh, Lovely. See, the last bomb threat this, uh, this club got had nothing to do with an actual bomb. The Dutchman learned that the hard way, and the guy still has the bruises to show it, but... Okay, you got it under control then. That, was, right. out, that so, was that was actually out of character. Yeah, um, yeah. I was, I was just making a, <laughs> a poop joke, guys. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Nobody laughed. All right. Oh, live by the sword, die by the sword. Continue. <laughs> it's been a very funny episode tonight. I've been really enjoying myself, guys. Thank you for the entertainment. Here so for you, and she would nod, and it would go. She would just say. We'll be ready. Hell yeah. Now, Lucky, Scav probably leans over and whispers to you, Hey, uh, what, what about that other thing? You said you wanted to uh, deal with that. I, sorry, you, you told me to remind you about it. Uh, rem well, then remind me. 
she said with the quest with the raised eyebrow. Uh, um, the 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 um the Lucan thing. Oh, that. All right, thank you. I did actually forget that. Thank you for reminding. Me. Uh, hey guys. Um, we're gonna make a deal with Lucan and just avoid this whole mess. So works for me. She's going to turn and look and say, Cash, let your zero point friend know that we would like to talk with Lucan, that we're ready to extend an offer. You're going to make me talk to the trolls. All right, I'll talk to the Just don't feed them. I mean, isn't any interaction feeding them? But that's cool. That's cool. I'll hit them up. Right she now? Can we do it right preferably. now? Preferably, yes. Um, she's gonna, like... You could have see her eyes basically roll back into her head for a second. Yeah. And I'm gonna send that message. Susan probably at this point is like, wait, are, we're making a fucking deal with... Deal with the devil. What? I thought you were concerned about me being mad at you. And she kind of takes a deep breath, closes her eyes and lets it out and goes, I, I'm going to go back to the clinic. And, uh, she said before she moves, she, Lucky would say, I've surprised you once today. Maybe I could surprise you twice. She kind of goes, uh, she kind of looks back and goes, I'll get the highlight reel. And uh, walks out of the office. Oh. Hey, even well, when I'm... I win, I lose. That's frustrating. I, I'll follow her out, and I'm like, "Hey, so was it busy in the clinic while I was away? I'm sorry, I had to do that. Yeah. But let's go catch up some stuff." She's like, "Yeah," and she is in a kind of stormy mood. It seems she goes, "I, I mean, what clinic? That way, I, it's." It's all going to be gone soon. You no, know. What? It, we can still maintain it. And she kind of takes a deep breath and goes, You remember what they did in CBS. You remember the f- fucked up shit that came through our door and heck got? You remember... And she she goes down and she's like, I. And she um, but she's like, you and I are trying to make it to a, a safe place for people to get medical assistance. That was the whole point that we wanted this clinic here. Whether Lucky approved or not, you and I had this thing where we wanted to make it a clinic where people could get better. And she probably turns around and goes, Trinix, I want you to listen really carefully. Your best bet, after what she's doing to use you, get a fucking plane ticket and find a way out of this hellhole. And uh, but she, before you can even respond, she fucking walks off and she's like, I'm taking a walk. Okay. Bye. Back? Yeah. Back to the folks in the office. You make that, uh, message? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. What do you say? <clears throat> uh, hi, friends. F-R-A-N-S. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Lucky wants to make a deal with Lucan! Exclamation point. Winky face that also looks kind of drunk. Jesus. Uh, What else was I supposed to say? No, that's it. We're ready to make a deal with Lucan. Okay. Um, 
hit us up when you're free. Maybe we'll have drinks with drinky emojis and then like maybe the rainbow flag beside it. And then also definitely a skull and crossbones. Uh, and that's it. Yeah. Oh, I love the skull and crossbones. Got to, got to put in the branding there. Yeah, um, okay. yeah. So, um, you get, uh, a response back immediately. It is just a pin and a winky face. Uh, the pin goes to, um, it's, it's a spot that's kind of, um, it's in a plantage, but it's like kind of up in this north quadrant of plantage that's kind of over by Artis, like right mm. over here. Mm. Yeah. Let me look, uh, by Artis. Where was Artis again? Uh, kind of lower right hand. So... Got it, got it. This it. is where, yeah, this is where the, the, the pin is. It's in this area. Okay. Um, then I'll, I'll tell Lucky I have an address. Are you sure you want to do this? Are you, like, really, really sure you want to do this? Oh, absolutely, she says, pulling a data slate out from her desk. She puts it on there and turns it on and uh, connects it to her uh, agent. Mm -hmm. There's a display of her that pops up on there. She hands it to uh, Scene and says, please, go meet them there. I'll have a discussion with them. Oh, good. I'm fodder. No, not fodder. <laughs> if it were fodder, I would have... S That's not very nice. <laughs> it was about... <laughs> uh, <laughs> what were you says, about to say? <laughs> uh, she says, hey, if I were going to sin, you're not fodder. <laughs> Mm -hmm, that's what you were gonna say. Yep. Now she... everyone wonders if Lucky was talking about them. <laughs> <laughs> Except Scene. Oh Scene's apparently in the good. Yeah. Oh, Scene's great. Scene's fucking great. Take Scene at least one wrong. other person with Perfect. you, preferably two or just make sure you have enough to get out alive. She says. I think I need to go. I think I have to go. Don't I? No, you will die. Will I? Yeah, I will. You're right. I feel like... I take Connor so with you. Mad. She I'm, says... I'll take Connor and Pain and Valkyrie, just to be safe. Connor today. Pain, you are tag along yet again. <laughs> <laughs> I look to Pain, of course, if you're not tired of my company. No, no, it's fine. And uh, we tricked those white wolf fucks really good, didn't we? Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> I'm quite surprised. I mean, I guess for a movie buff, you know how to uh, act on the fly. It's a good trait. Yeah, it's very helpful in making brain dances, especially when, you know, it gets a little gory and you got to make some sort of uh, light <laughs> comment, make things a little bit more fun. Oh, that's grim. I love that. Well, I think things are about to get intensely fun where we're going, so. <laughs> God damn. Fucking zingers tonight. What a great fucking... Uh, I'm happy. I hope you appreciate that I'm basically doing what Lucan just did to us. Yeah. So, you guys all, you know, pack up, you know, and... Um, you start heading to the location. Is there any particular way that you're doing this? I mean, I'm sure you're taking the van because you're taking. We're you know, taking Valkyrie. the van. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and also, it only fits two people, the muscle car. Um, so it wouldn't make sense to bring three and a tiger. Um, that's some hangover shit right there. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, you guys, um, you know, head over to uh, this location. Uh, and as you kind of go over there, you see, um, you know, you see that this area is very small touched by the war. Matter of fact, this kind of border here between the Jewish quarter and plantage, unmanned. This little area is hard to hold on to, like pretty much impossible. Um, so they don't, they don't try to, you know, it's, it's a hard border with Artis. It's a hard border with Jewish quarter. There is nothing to be gained across here. So this place effectively is a ghost town. 
<laughs> uh, Plantage is the kind of place where there's a lot of people that live there. So you see huge empty mega buildings. Uh, as a matter of fact, this whole block, like this whole city block, is one mega building. Uh, and you guys are brought to the second floor of this mega building in what is known as Warehouse 12. Uh, you approach the mega building and mega buildings aren't meant to be empty. I mean, they're human ant farms. They're fucking smelly. They're loud. There's people everywhere. You can't get a fucking moment of privacy. The whole point of a mega building is it's like a big version of Kowloon. It's a completely functioning city, essentially, in its own right. You know, a, a completely functioning community that towers above the smog clouds and contains everyone from the lowest to the highest of lives. This mega building is empty. Uh, this is probably the first time you guys have seen a not destroyed empty mega building. And even those destroyed ones, lots of homeless people, right? It's eerie in a city that constantly breathes, speaks, walks, sweats, unfolds umbrellas, yells, fights, loves, all of that. This is the one place that feels almost devoid of life. You see traffic going around it, but even the traffic around here is a little bit quieter than most of the other places. You pull into the mega building and there you are. What do you do? Well, let's not waste any time. Yeah. <laughs> Back yeah. doors open. Valkyrie yeah. hops out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, as you guys kind of head out of the uh, van, you first go to the elevator, which appears to be not in functioning order. Um, so you have to take the uh, fire escape stairs. Um, you head up and you... <laughs> Once once you get up into this, you know, second floor, uh, again, still total fucking ghost town. The only thing left is trash and empty air hypos, which are also trash, but feel relevant. Um, you walk into this big fucking warehouse, um, and uh, at the very end of the warehouse... Uh, it's completely empty. All that's there are support columns, dust on the floor, you know, and some hanging lights. And kind of at the far back middle, you know, uh, there is a person sitting on a stool. Their hands are tied. They have a blank, uh, like a blank black bag over their head and a sign on their chest that says, Don't open until Xmas. <laughs> Oh, that looks like a bomb. Ha! Oh. So what's what you doing? <laughs> I was gonna Sorry, say. I, lost, I lost connection. Sorry. Oh, you're like good. I said, that looks like a bomb that hurt. Ha! And everyone just froze. Ha. Uh. <laughs> uh, okay, so remind me what I know about Deltric. He was uh, totally mostly... cybered out. Big frame. So... This could not be Deltric. Matter of fact, this is a woman. Got it. Hmm. Looks like another doll. Wonderful. I'll take a look around, though. Okay. You uh, go ahead and make me a um, awareness notice. I will actually order Valkyrie to search as well. So I'll make mine. Just remember. So she'll quietly pad off into the uh, the shadows. Mm -hmm. Just remember, Lucky was exploded by a person bomb. Yes. Exactly. Okay. Probably stuffed with ball bearings. Okay. Now and then, um, Payne, do you want to make a awareness notice? Or what are you doing while you're yeah. in here? Okay. Yeah, because last time he didn't make an awareness notice, he was in a... Um, an explosion that he yeah. tripped over. <laughs> oh, nice, God, sexy. So, pain <laughs> with your expert, uh, you know, uh, situation. Um, you know, you like you you are used to clearing rooms. You know, 
you look left, you look right, you look up, you look down. This room appears to be completely devoid of people other than this uh, person in the back. The area that you came up in, completely empty. It looks like there is no one here. And really, there's only traces of this one person coming in here. You only really saw a tiny bit of disturbed dust in the room, implying that there's maybe two people who came in here in total, right? Um, you look at this person, unless they've got something internal, they're not rigged to explode. And they don't have any, like, weird external thing, or they don't have any weird, like, body shape shit going on. Like, you know, usually if people are rigged to explode, they have, like, a pocket in their chest that's kind of slightly visible, or maybe they've got a brain bomb, which is more local, so it's not gonna affect you, or they've got a high-five gun, which again, is not going to affect you. This person is tied. I'll start making my way over to the... Safe enough. I'll start making my way over to the Christmas present. Yeah. Might be also, a doll. Yeah. Also, side note, Valkyrie sniffs around this person and kind of does a little bit of a growl, but kind of keeps her distance. Uh, as in a what? Just, just maintaining the order of. Yeah, the answer? Okay. yeah. No, it's not. It's not like she's like this thing is freaking me alert, out. Alert! 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 <laughs> yeah, she's more. She's more just like I don't like this thing. I am animal. Distrust. Weird situation. You know, she's I mean, feeding off of kind of your energy as well, because you know your your energy is this is a weird situation. You know. I'll uh, I'll walk up and then I just kind of like. I guess grab the bag and I'll, I'll just pull it up and like one swift motion be like, Merry Christmas. You pull it up and you see this woman has just like tear stains from mascara all down her face. She's all dolled up with like that traditional kind of like super heavy makeup, you know, traditional isn't the right term. More like, more like she, she's very, uh, you know, um, she's very streetwalker looking, you know what I mean? She came from um, Club Buck. Yeah, yeah, I not club fuck, uh, just someone, what? you know, just some some, you know. I didn't but, mean specific. Um, that. I just meant the the makeup. <laughs> no, I get you, I get you. Uh, and she looks up with this big smile and goes, "Merry Christmas." And I'll hold out the little device and just. <laughs> I brought a doll of my own. Yeah, you turn it on, and lucky you're on the other side. You see this woman. And it's, uh, ah, hello, it's so good to see you. I'm sad that you couldn't make this meeting in person. Hmm. As am I. So. Uh, yeah, actually this voice is different. This still Lucan kind of? Oh, the diction is there. It's just a, it's a woman. Right. Yeah. Hmm. So, Lucan, I have a counteroffer. And she kind of cocks her head and goes, Oh, ho, ho. a counteroffer. All right, let's hear it. You double the amount of money you're giving us. Uh, trying to hold on. Deltric is sent to us in one piece with all of his appendages and you take your little gang and leave New Amsterdam for good never oh. return and stay out of my city this is why I got sent okay She kind of starts laughing, and she's like, <laughs> Oh, Lucky. Lucky, Lucky. Oh my goodness, you're so funny. This is such a good joke. No, this is, <laughs> this is non-negotiable. So, what do you say about my original offer? Because obviously you're you're not in your right mind, or else no one would, you know, make that deal. She decides 
to uh, examine her fingernails as she's uh, looking at the screen. Happen, you know, just. Mm-hmm. Hmm. No, I uh, I seem to be in very much the right state of mind. I think it is you that has decided to uh, lowball your initial offer. Hmm. We're not so far apart. Maybe we could meet in the middle somewhere. <laughs> yeah, end at that. <laughs> oh, you want to meet in the middle. <laughs> well, um, how about this? I give you Deltric. And you shoot yourself in the head. I think that that'd be a uh, a fair a fair compromise, you know. Where's the poise from last time? I don't understand. Oh. <laughs> well, I thought I was dealing with um, oh a- with an actual um, someone with some sort of uh, common sense, maybe education, uh, any kind of real smarts of any kind. But uh, it just turns out that you're. Just another idiot like the rest of them. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, especially in the fact that you seem to know so naturalistically what that looks like. (laughs) I am glad to be in the face of a peer. Kind of, uh, kind of, uh, looks at you and goes, oh, ah, I see. You just decided that, uh, play an old prank on Uncle Lucan. Well, you know, I understand pranks and I understand jokes. It's, uh, probably one of my favorite ways of communicating, honestly. So, you know, Lucky, between the rapid ruthlessness and our penchant for jokes, (laughs) maybe we aren't so dissimilar. But, uh, hey, I'll see you out there. And then the facial expression changes to one of shock and horror. And then you just hear, oh God, oh God, no, oh God. And then just, her head just fucking explodes. That's Lucan. That's the Lucan I know. Mm-hmm. There it is. Yeah, uh, yeah scene, there it is. Yeah, scene, um, the data slate and your face is now covered in gray matter and blood. As is usual. (laughs) Now that that's taken care of you here through a muffled speaker. (laughs) It's time to prepare ourselves. What's today? Friday? Yeah, Friday. In a little over 24 hours, we will have our bloody Sunday. Oh. Hell yeah. You're like way too excited about that. I just kind of nod and I click off the device and I just look over at Pain for a moment. Pain, you got blood, a just, flex of blood. Yeah, just blood <laughs> all over my face and I just go, war were declared. War were declared? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that. No shit. <laughs> And I think we're going to call it there for the <laughs> evening. Um, let's uh, let's get some sign-offs, y'all. Um, let's start with, uh, with the man with shockingly little of a plan, <laughs> Trinix. I have a plan. Just go and see where it leads. That's a plan, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. So, I'm Scott. I play Trinix, who gets in the situation just like his brother and still survives regardless, even though I should get my head shut off each time. Mm-hmm. But it's awesome. Um, mm-hmm. Okay, today's Thursday. Saturday is a game that I can't remember. Something about it. After the bomb. Yeah, that's what it is. I'm in that one. So we'll figure out if we if we survive that movie is insightful and I'm like oh my land here mm-hmm. we go and then every other Sunday which won't be this Sunday but it'll be the following Sunday we got Gloomfall where I tried to save him but I wasn't thinking but hey it was fun I almost 
got burned alive, too. You did good. But I got out, and I'm okay. And then we got Monday, where it's Fire Strike, and Xander is... Xander? Doing research, I guess? He's Xander, but he's not Xander. Yeah. He's okay. Xander is a little more stiff. You know, Xander's a cool guy, but Xander's a little bit more of a more of a more of a prick, you know? Yeah. 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 So we'll figure out how to put the universe back to where it's supposed to while everybody else is fighting. We won't be fighting. We'll be trying to get a code. Hopefully. Or something else. But hey, it'll be fun. Watch and then continue watching because every game on here is fun. I agree. Bye. That's it. <laughs> All right. Excellent. Next thing's next. Let's go to the hacker in general who got not chewed, chewed out, chewed out, not chewed out. Amy? Uh, yeah. Josh? Yeah. Do you, uh, you want to know what actually went on there? What happened? I mean, you were basically told, hey, you didn't run it by me. At this point, I've given up trying to get in front of that. So you did something I would have, you know, greenlit anyway. Nice try. <laughs> okay. Well, that's not so bad. Yeah. So I think, like, in the midst of all of this, she would have, like, secretly fist bumped it, fist bumped, uh, fucking suzerain yeah <laughs> like fucking like got out of it so <laughs> we're good um hello i'm amy again today i played cash and uh that was this i like this game so much um mm. what else am i in i'm on mondays and i'm on wednesdays and those are fun and i love them and also i uh i have a business called hype graphics and i make shit like this, it's cool and waterproof now. And super, super high quality. If you want that, you should visit hypegraphics.co or my Etsy, which is hypegraphics LLC. And that's me. Yeah. And also, I'm very tired because all I do is work all the time. Let's go, Amy. Great. Proud of you. Okay. Uh, Next thing's next. Let's go to um, currently everyone's favorite. Hey, take them with you. Uh, Pain. <laughs> yes, I'm the computer king, the gentleman supervillain. And I was Pain Dexter, who apparently is the plus one of the group. <laughs> so um, other than being in this, I'm in uh, Monday Night Fire Shrike, as long as that lasts. We're having a finale soon. Mm -hmm. Big, big booms, probably. Um, maybe even giant talking rats that uh, blow themselves up. And I don't mean Twinkle. Okay, maybe I mean Twinkle. <laughs> uh, <laughs> hey, uh, I am the uh, rat under your fridge. <laughs> I'm not going to... Hold on, hold on, hold on. No, no. Stop. I was, I was there for that. Why would I do that? <laughs> I looked at that and said, man, that was crazy. <laughs> yeah, but he did save everyone. That's true. I am not a brave man. <laughs> <laughs> no, I guess not. Are you a man or a mouse? There's an easy answer for that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so other than if that... If I were a man, uh, I would be five foot tall. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> other than that, I'm a podcaster, and uh, if you go around your podcasters and look up Computer King, one word, uh, you will find Into the Dark with the Computer King, which you can also find at computerking.buzzsprout.com, where I talk about uh, the darker side of human sexuality, like BDSM and other things like that. Uh, adults only, please. Mm. Check it out. Excellent. All right. Next, um, Little Miss Grey Matter, uh, <laughs> fucking scene. Sod it. <laughs> covered in blood and gray, gray matter and it's glorious. What were declared? What were I, declared? I feel like it's about time I made my reference to the only thing scenes probably watched. 
Mm-hmm. I think it was like by Futurama. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, uh, yeah, you got me here playing scene. My wonderful tiger Valkyrie. I was ready to fuck someone up if they tried to betray us, but nope. It was just another doll. Should have called that. I was gonna shoot shoot them in the head anyways, so the head exploding just kind of saved me the problem. Um, you were just gonna <clears throat> kill a doll. It's bad. That's bad manners at the very least. I mean, they were probably. I just assume at this point they're probably gonna go back and then get tortured by him anyways. Um, you know, and he's unstable. Just decided a mercy killing's best, huh? Yes. The, the, Honestly, the, you're like, not. The, you're not the, entirely wrong. Yeah. The description of how the, she already looked was like, oh, this girl's been through like torment already, so it's gonna be better to just put her out of her misery. But anyways, you can catch me here on Monday for a little bit, like first half of a uh, 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 fire strike. Oliver Byrne, the bear who will only be there for the first half of the end and will hibernate through the rest or just be controlled by, you know, someone else. Um, yeah. And you can catch me on Wednesdays in Beyond the Horizon as Gideon Sunborn, the 7-3 ranger with eyes of fire and who just, as a frontliner, took no hits because nothing hit him because people ran past him. And then they got hit. <laughs> and then he went ahead, and everything came up behind. And he was like, motherfuckers, these things are avoiding me. They were like, this guy threw a rock and did 17 damage. I don't want to go near him. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's been that's been my experience. It's great. I have to try to protect the party. I'm going to have to like start throwing more rocks or something. Uh, <laughs> beyond that, that's, uh, that, 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 that's me, folks. All right. And then finally, the one who decided to pull a, a, a 180 tray flip into a nose grind that goes into a stoppy, that goes into a laser flip, into, uh, into a, a, a manual, which then they um, ollie uh, f- a tray flip out you of onto another rail. Yeah, I really do. Go ahead, Gunner. <laughs> Hello, everybody. My name is Cyrus Smith, and today you caught me running. You didn't actually catch me running anything except <laughs> my little group here. Uh, you running caught me your playing back. as. I'm just kidding. Got him. I'm just. Kidding. Please don't hurt me on Wednesdays. I've already died. Dylan, because of that, I'm going to start talking like uh, a pilot. And uh, you caught me playing uh, Lucky today, okay. and uh, we're going to be. Uh, Moving forward into uh, after the bomb on Saturdays. Oh my God. Uh, also, uh, Never leave this <laughs> Monday man. nights is going to be. <laughs> I'm going to be playing Twinkle Bailey, and uh, <laughs> it's going to be in Fire Strike. Uh, and then moving on to uh, Wednesdays, we're going to be. Uh, r- I'm going to be running uh, over the horizon where uh, <laughs> our. Uh, <laughs> People decided that uh, they weren't up to the task of exterminators and uh, decided to leave. And um, well, now they're going to have to tell the farmer that there's a bunch of scary shit out there and uh, we're leaving. And uh, yeah, also, by the way, tonight, our uh, departure from uh, Wichita to uh, D.C. is going to be. Slightly cloudy, a little bumpy, uh, and then we're probably actually going to turn right back around because we don't want to go to DC anyways. Uh, thank <laughs> you for flying, uh, Paradise Theater Air. <laughs> oh God, Paradise Theater Air, Paradise Theater Air, where the online or where the in air snacks are edibles. Well, shit. I fucked that one up so bad. <laughs> oh Christ. Oh, Christ. Okay. And that leaves it to me. But first, what's that? Another lead-up scene? Well, we have a dark room, right? And in this dark room, Lucan is sitting in front of a computer. The big fucking fur coat over him kind of goes, Well, I thought that I was talking to, you know, someone smart. Someone reasonable. But clearly I wasn't, you know. And we get the little feed, and then... All right, well, I'll see you out there. And then, uh, hits a button. Stands up. (sighs) 
<sighs> and just kind of like leans forward and then looks over. Deltric goes, not get the answer that you wanted. He goes, you can shut the fuck up. And he walks up to Deltric, who at this point is halfway into some sort of metal carapace. There's a couple people working on this. He goes, I don't think that you understand how this works. And he goes, I don't think that you think. In fact, I don't think that you should be capable of thought. Honestly, ever since I picked you up, you've been nothing but an ungrateful little fucking moron. A fucking asshole. A thorn in my fucking side. And your stupid little insignificant friends have decided just for kicks that they're going to try and play little rescue ranger with you. Well, I don't think it's gonna happen! And he, like, grabs him, like, under the chin and goes, Listen, when I tell you to dance, you ask what dance! When I say to say something, you tell me what I want to hear! And when I say that you need to fucking jump, I think you know the answer. And at this point, Deltric goes, No, Lucan, I don't think I do. Can you please explain the answer to me in your calm and rational way of speaking? Lucan kind of steps back, gets a smile and goes, <laughs> You know, <laughs> It's a congenital trait. <laughs> Your dad, you know. <laughs> when we were kids, you know, he'd always, uh, <laughs> he'd always try and call me on my bullshit. You know, it's, uh, it's hard. I miss him sometimes, but, <laughs> you know, uh, he was, uh, he was lucky. <laughs> he, he got out of there before I did. <laughs> And, uh, sometimes I wonder if, um, sometimes I wonder if God uh, had decided that I was the one who was supposed to die. And he died because uh, I didn't. I, I think they call that, uh, survivor's guilt, but, uh, I'm not an expert on mental stability. I, I'm not really an expert on on many things. I can tell you one thing. I'm truly sorry that your father died. And then he turns and his face just changes to a blank slate and he says, Remove his vocal cords. Goodbye, Deltric. And walks out of the room and closes the door. All right, so, <clears throat> hi everybody. My name is Mira. Uh, I have mental breakdowns once a week for fun. Uh, so, um, you have caught me today uh, running New Amsterdam. Uh, you can also catch me on Saturdays, uh, this Saturday particularly, for After the Bomb. I am very excited for that. It's uh, it's gonna be a fucking hoot and a half. Um, I'm uh, scared. Uh, I'm scared where I pee. Um, you can also catch me every other Sunday, not this Sunday, but next Sunday, where I am in um, Gloomfall <clears throat> as, uh, well, she made a little fucky-wucky, but Madame Yenvrath uh, acknowledged it to only one person and then we'll never acknowledge it again. Um... Next, uh, you can catch me on Mondays, not next Monday. Important announcement! Important announcement! We don't have Fire Strike next Monday. We are taking a one-week hiatus for preparations purposes and for resting up. Because what I understand is that next week, 
on Fire Shrike, or not next week, but the once we get things rolling on Fire Shrike, it's gonna start coming and it won't stop 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 coming. Anyway, you know the deal. Um, past that, you can also catch me... That's it. If you're currently watching us on Twitch, we love you so much. But also, you could be proving your undying loyalty to us by watching us again and again and again and again and again at, at twitch.tv, no, youtube.com forward slash paradise theater. If you're currently watching us on YouTube, we love you so much. But also, what are you doing, silly goose? You could be watching us live on twitch.tv forward slash pair underscore o underscore dice underscore theater. And if you happen to be a fan of the hot, fast, and sexy world of scheduling. You also happen to be a community member who likes being interacted with. And you happen to like, what memes? I landed that one on my feet. Check us out at Pear Theater. If you want me, yours truly, Mira, to run your game, check me out at Mira Shades Gaming. Send me an email at MiraShadesGM at gmail.com. That's M-I-R-A-S-H-A-D-E-S-G-M at gmail.com. And from all of us here at Paradise Theater, let's get a good old Nostrovia and get the hell out of here. Nostrovia! Nostrovia. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes. laughs>